As technology continues to evolve, so do the tools available for academic success. Do you remember when calculators were first invented? Well, neither do I. I'm not that old. Yes. But from what I've read, they actually caused quite the commotion. You see, educators went back and forth on whether or not to actually ban them from the classroom altogether. Their fear was that their students would lose their ability to do basic arithmetic. But now a few years later, we're sending rockets to Mars and we've created large language AI models. So I think we're doing okay on the math and the science front. We haven't lost our ability to do basic arithmetic, even if that's what Common Core made you feel like. Now, despite this uproar, educators eventually were delighted to realize that their students were now able to solve higher order, more conceptual problems with the aid of the calculator to crunch some of the basic and more tedious parts of those math problems. Today, I believe we are at a similar point in education where new tools like large language models, for instance, ChatGPT, are capable of doing extraordinary things. On the one hand, they can write you a solid B- college essay in like 30 seconds or less. On the other hand, that will still get you flagged for plagiarism in most cases, then you'll get a big fat F. So if you're interested in learning these tools effectively, efficiently, and in a way that upholds academic integrity that you don't have to hide from your professor or teacher, then continue watching this video for the do's and the don'ts of large language models for students. Now, in case you've been hiding under a rock for the past year, ChatGPT is a large language model trained and developed by OpenAI. It's been trained on a diverse array of human textual information that can be found on the internet. It uses machine learning algorithms to generate human-like text based on the inputs. Now, ethically, the use of AI in academics is still an ongoing debate. So best practice is to consult your school's academic integrity policies and make sure that you're well within those and be transparent about your use of AI as a learning enhancement. Now, one of the best ways to amplify your learning is actually to hit the like button on this video. Just kidding. As a thank you for doing that, here's the funniest meme that I could find about chat GPT in academics. Moving on. Now, one of the hardest things about writing a paper for college or even for high school is all that time that you waste staring at the blank screen as you try to come up with a topic that fits the assignment criteria. That's one reason why I skipped that whole process when I was in college and just waited until the last minute to get started. Yeah, not a very good strategy. Now, this is where ChatGPT comes into play because let's say that I need to write a paper on the topic of biomechanics as it relates to sport. But maybe I'm new to the field, I'm just starting out, and I have no idea what biomechanics even is. Well, I can ask ChatGPT what are some topics within biomechanics related to sport, and it will give me a list of topics. From there, I can narrow in on some of these topics, things I might not have even known about prior to this, and I can start to do some more research. Now, as you review the suggestions, you might not find one that perfectly suits your needs. Oftentimes in my own work, ChatGPT will give me a list and it will actually spark an idea that is perfect for the project that I'm working on. So even if you don't use one specifically from the list, at least they're going to get that brainstorm going for you and spark an idea. Now, maybe the topic you end up choosing is the role of biomechanics in preventing ACL injuries. That's a very relevant topic that applies to most athletes and really anyone who has ACLs, which is most everybody. The next step is to begin researching that topic. And in the battle days, like when I was in undergrad, I actually had to stand up out of my chair, put on pants and walk all the way to the library and start looking through the research stacks to find that literature. I had to enlist the help of a librarian. And then in grad school, everything became digital and now I could go to Google Scholar, but there was nobody curating that information for me in the learning and discovery phase. With ChatGPT, we can simply ask it for a list of factors that would be relevant to our topic. So I type in, can you provide an overview of the biomechanical factors that contribute to ACL injuries in athletes. It's going to spit out an outline for you that can be a starting point for your future research. My tip for you is to take each of the little components of ChatGPT's answer and then begin investigating those, reading articles based on those topics to really flesh out your understanding. Now that you have a topic and some background information for your paper, you wanna create an outline that you can follow to make the writing process easier. ChatGPT again can help you with this. Simply ask it to create an outline for the topic of your choice, in this case, biomechanics and its role on preventing ACL injuries. Now it's going to give you an outline, but I don't want you to just blindly take this outline and then use it. Because you've now done some of your background research, 
you should be able to view this outline with a critical eye to make sure that it's including everything that you want in your paper. And maybe it actually has a scope that's too broad for the purposes of what you're writing, and you might have to narrow it down a little. And it's really at this point that we want to begin fact checking what ChatGPT is giving us. Because I've run into situations before where maybe some of the sub points that it gives me are not relevant to what I'm needing to talk about. And sometimes the information can actually be a little bit off base. The bottom line is that you really want to curate and modify this outline that it gives you to make sure that it's your own work. But it does help you get started. Now from this point on, once you have that outline and you've reviewed it and modified it to your needs, now I would begin writing the paper on your own. And the reason we don't just ask ChatGPT to give us a paper based on this outline is for the purpose of academic integrity. The point of your education is to get you to wrestle critically with ideas and to understand them and then synthesize your own thoughts and opinions and to also learn how to write well and articulate the thoughts that you have in written form and in oral form. We can't just ask ChatGPT to do that all for us even though it probably could do it. However, if you do get stuck in the writing process and you have writer's block, one thing that I do is I will put my current paragraph into ChatGPT that I'm working on and I'll say, hey, give me a few examples of how I could finish out this thought. It'll give me some examples. I'll narrow in on one and say, yeah, that looks good. And then I'll rewrite it in my own words, making sure that it's all my own work in the process. Now, as you're writing your paper, make sure that you also have those resources open next to you or in another window that you found during your exploration phase after you selected your topic. It's really important that you don't just go off of what an AI model has given you and take that as fact. We always wanna double check it against the literature, against the textbook, against our notes from class to make sure that they align. And doing this is gonna help you to write an original piece even if you used AI to help you come up with a structure and the topic. ChatGPT can also serve as a study aid. It can not only generate practice questions for you to test your knowledge, but it can also serve as a digital flashcard system so that you can recall key terms and important concepts. Now, the first step is to identify the subject matter and set clear goals. For instance, if you're in an exercise physiology class, you wanna specify, generate some questions related to exercise physiology. But if your test is on the cardiovascular system in specific, then you want to make sure that ChatGPT knows this. Now, of course, this might seem obvious, but I'm saying it because prompt engineering is one of the most important components of getting the right output from ChatGPT. So once we've streamlined the topic, now we need to set clear goals. So you can tell ChatGPT that you want to learn the overlying concepts of the cardiovascular system, or you could say you want to remember the key terms of the cardiovascular system. You might tell it, give me some multiple choice questions, or you might wanna specify some open-ended response questions. It all depends on how you study best and how you retain the knowledge best, but also on how you're going to be tested in the classroom. Now, if you want flashcards made, just ask ChatGPT to generate for you a set of flashcards related to a topic. Let's say you pick cellular respiration and you say, hey, ChatGPT, can you give me a set of flashcards related to cellular respiration? You can go through these flashcards on your own time and memorize them and then ask ChatGPT to quiz you on that set of flashcards. Now, the next way that I encourage my students to use ChatGPT is by engaging their critical thinking skills and employing the Socratic method. Here's how it works. Select a topic that you're interested in learning. In this case, let's say it's the ethics of gene editing. This is a topic that is rife with different viewpoints. So you start off by telling ChatGPT that you want to engage in a dialogue, a question and answer dialogue, in order to probe some of the underlying understandings that you have and your preconceived notions on the topic. So I might type in, let's discuss the ethical implications of gene editing. And then we might go on to request that ChatGPT outline various perspectives that exist on this topic because we know that there are more than one. This will actually provide you with a foundational understanding and some background knowledge before you get into the flow of conversation. Now, the Socratic method actually involves the teacher asking questions of the student to lead the student into a process of discovery and learning of their own preconceived notions and learning new things as well. In this case, you're actually asking ChatGPT the questions, and then you can start engaging in a back and forth dialogue. For example, next you can start probing some underlying assumptions that each of these sides has. For instance, what are the underlying assumptions behind 
the argument that gene editing is ethically problematic. And you can take a look at ChatGPT's response. And if anything is vague or ambiguous or unclear, simply ask it to further elaborate. You can ask it for examples to illustrate, or you can ask it for analogies as well to help you understand the concept that it's trying to explain. Now, a really important point of developing your own critical thinking skills is to realize when there are multiple viewpoints and challenging views on a topic. So a great strategy for developing critical thinking skills is actually to ask ChatGPT for counter arguments against your preconceived beliefs or against your held beliefs on a topic. We could also ask it to compare and contrast two sides of an argument. And when we're done questioning ChatGPT on a topic, we could ask it to summarize our entire conversation so that we have it in bullet points. This is an amazing study habit that will actually increase the speed at which you're learning a subject and increase your retention of that subject matter because you're not just passively listening to a lecture or engaged in reading, but you're actually having a dialogue where you're forced to interact with the subject material and hear from other viewpoints outside of your own and to be challenged. So far, we've only covered the do's, things that you should do to amplify your learning process by using ChatGPT. We still need to touch on the don'ts, things that you should probably not do with AI in a learning situation. Now, the first don't is, of course, plagiarism. Although this content is machine generated, it hasn't been created by a person, it's still not your content. So you shouldn't claim it as such. My advice is to only use ChatGPT in the exploratory and learning phases of your assignment and then create the actual assignment yourself. So use it for constructive feedback, use it for critical thinking skills, use it to explore a topic, use it to help you create an outline, and then the rest of the work should be yours through the finish line. And, and anything you do use from ChatGPT, if it appears unaltered in your work, it should be cited as such. The next big thing to watch out for is an over-reliance on ChatGPT or other AI tools. Now, personally, I use ChatGPT and other AI tools just about every day in my work life, in my training, and they are very convenient. They help me get a lot more done and they maximize my productivity. However, there are some times when I just rely on them instead of my own recall, my own ability to remember things, my own ability to work through hard concepts. And really that doesn't do me any good because I'm not sharpening my own skill set and I'm not staying on top of the knowledge that I should be. And so after recognizing this, I just made a conscious effort to not go straight to the OpenAI app, not to go straight to that ChatGPT browser as frequently and try to work through the problem myself first before I start to tap into these AI tools. The point of the education is to maximize your own learning and to prepare yourself for a role in a future career where you can serve other people and actually be a content expert or a, or a skilled practitioner of whatever it is you're in school for. Remember, never outsource your critical thinking to a machine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, ChatGPT can sometimes provide you with misinformation. And that's why the next big no-no for ChatGPT um, is to blindly accept what it says as truth. It's been known to make factual errors, mathematical errors, even incidences of racial and sexual bias. So it's not infallible, which makes sense because it was trained on human data on the internet. And we all know the internet can be a pretty scary place. It's a wild, wild west of human thought and discourse. And so if this is what ChatGPT was trained on, then the outputs can only be as good as the inputs. ChatGPT is also programmed with a high degree of agreeableness. So if you push it hard enough, it will actually end up agreeing with you, even if that agreement is incorrect. So you have to be careful. Make sure you challenge its assumptions, but challenge them by going back to the literature and drawing on that pre-existing knowledge instead of taking what it says as truth. So hopefully some of these tips and also the pitfalls to avoid when using ChatGPT will be helpful to you in your educational journey. At the end of the day, we have to remember why we are in school and getting an education in the first place, which is to prepare ourselves for a future career that we find fulfilling and that can help other people. If we are not learning the skill set or the knowledge or the getting the prerequisites that we need to enter that field, then we're really doing ourselves a disservice. And that's why I think if we follow the principle of amplifying learning with ChatGPT, not just making learning easier, but amplifying it, then we're going to stay on the right path. Remember to consult your university or your school or your professor to make sure that they have an AI guideline or to see what types of rules they have in place surrounding the use of AI operate within those and be transparent and clear in how you're using it. Now, if you like this video, make sure you check out some of the other resources on my channel surrounding strength and conditioning, sports science, or kinesiology. Hopefully they'll help you out too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.